Now on to the third thing that we see when we're troubleshooting Cameo Pro issues. If you have missed the first two parts, I would highly recommend that you click in the description below. Everything is linked down there to go to the part one and part two of this series or check out the playlist on YouTube and there is a Cameo Pro section. But we are going to get started with the number three thing that we see the most of. The third issue that we see most often, and I'm gonna go ahead and unload this cutting mat and set it back here. The third issue we see with the Cameo Pro is having your roller in the correct location. There are only, let's see, one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are only nine locations on this Cameo Pro 24 inch machine where this right roller can be locked properly. So I'm gonna first start with flipping my roller bar lock down. So I'm unlocking it, that lifts the right side of this roller bar. This is called, they call it a pinch roller. The idea is it has two little grips on either side of it and we'll do close-ups here in just a second directly in the middle of this roller is a little indent and here's a close-up now directly below that indent is the right roller so if you bend down and look in your machine under this roller bar you will see the right roller is about a quarter inch, maybe even less, directly under that indent on this pinch roller. Now, to have your roller, your right roller, locked in the proper position, that indent has to line up with the gray arrows on your machine. So there are nine, you saw me count them out. There are nine different arrows according to industry standard sizes. So you have, for instance, a nine inch cutting mat or silhouette nine inch vinyl, 12 inch vinyl, 12 inch cutting mat, 15 inch cut, uh, vinyl, and 24 inch vinyl or your cutting mat. However, something you need to keep in mind is just like if you've ever bought wood in a hardware store, wood has an industry standard that states it's two inches, for instance, but it's really not two inches. It's just a little bit under. And the same goes for vinyl in most cases. So what happens is the vinyl big manufacturers have these huge, large rolls and they come in a very specific size. Then it is, as it goes down the line, wherever it happens to be that this happens, is the vinyl is then cut from that large bulk roll. And when I'm talking large bulk roll, I'm talking huge rolls. So they divide it up into equal sections. When it comes down to it, what the industry standard is, is it may say that it's 12 inch wide vinyl, but in reality, 12 inch wide vinyl is really like 11.75 or 11.85. The same with 15 inch. It's all in how it's cut from the very bulk roll from the manufacturer at the company, how it's divided up equally and cut to maximize the number of rolls that can be cut out of it. So they're not left with little tiny two inch, you know, roll sections of it. So that's a little bit of the kind of behind the scenes of manufacturing and things like that. What that means for you is the, for instance, if you have a 15 inch um, vinyl, the 15 inch mark here, your vinyl might not be wide enough on that 15 inch mark, unless you are working, and it's very rare, there are a few um, retailers out there who cut their own vinyl and they make sure that it's 15 inches. But if you look at most of the vinyl suppliers, 
the, in the description, it will give you a statement that your vinyl is actually like 11.85, 11.86 inches wide. So it's one of those industry standards. Yes, it annoys people. Yes, it annoys users. But it is an industry standard, and that's just how it is. So you need to figure out how that works best in your machine. For the rollers, they need to be on the edge of the material or the cutting mat, especially your cutting mat. Your cutting mat, you want your rollers on the edges of the mat. You do not want it to roll across the um, adhesive on your cutting mat. If your rollers are rolling across the adhesive on the cutting mat, it can cause major cut issues. You can have your mat skew in the machine. What happens is that typically your left and your right rollers will not roll at the same rate of speed because one roller is stuck on some adhesive and it's not something that you can see with the naked eye typically. It's gonna be very small movements, but you're gonna notice it if your mat skews or your mat gets stuck in the machine. We've seen both. So the roll, right roller is very, very specific in where it needs to be locked in. So specific that if you have the indent, even a 16th of an inch to the left or to the right of that arrow, it can make a difference. Again, look at your roller, look at your machine, look how it's designed. That right roller and your left roller is very, very small. It does not span across this entire pinch roller area. It is a very tiny location underneath that roller bar. Now, something else I will mention here that I didn't before is another reason that you do not want your rollers to roll across the adhesive on your cutting mat is because not only could it cause it to move and roll at different rates of speed, but if adhesive gets picked up off that cutting mat and gets stuck to your rollers, these rollers are under this roller bar. It's not designed like the older Cameo models where you could try to clean them with a Q-tip. They are, they are gonna be very hard to clean if you can clean them at all. So if you get adhesive residue on those rollers from it rolling on your cutting mat, it's gonna be a problem. It's going to cause some major cut issues for you and feed issues more than anything the feeding issues, your mat, your material. Once you get sticky stuff on those rollers, it's gonna be hard to get off. So that's just something else to mention. Uh, I see a lot of users that have this roller on their cutting mat. So we troubleshoot that quite a bit. Now, you do want this roller lock flipped down so it's unlocked and it lifts, I keep hitting that button, the load button. Um, you do want this right side unlocked before you move this. Will it move with it locked? Yes. You don't want to do that. The more you do it, the more it's going to uh, work that mechanism and get the loosen it up. And so your right roller won't stay locked in place if you continue to force it along this bar without the roller bar lock unlocked. So once you move that, so say I'm gonna cut, I'll use this example here, my 12 inch cutting mat. So you want the rollers on the edge of your cutting mat. And this is also um, another reason that I would recommend silhouette cutting mats. I know people don't like them. I know they have their issues with them. I, I don't have an issue with them. I've used them for over 10 years now. I have no problems whatsoever, but other cutting mats are not the same size. So your rollers and the roller lock may not line up properly. The other thing is, is that other cutting mats can be thicker. In the past, it has been shown that thicker cutting mats can wear out your rollers faster. So it decreases the lifespan of your machine and your rollers and causes cut issues as you go along. Now this is with extended use for it. The other thing is, is your cuts don't line up in the exact same place as you see on your screen. But with a thicker mat, it can wear out those rollers. Those rollers are underneath. There is no getting them out. There is no fixing them. So if the rollers get stretched out on this machine, it's a paperweight. You're not gonna be able to get it to feed properly. There's really nothing you can do. And we'll talk about this more in depth here in just a second. But your, like I said in the beginning, your left roller 
is directly under this little dot on the front of the roller bar. I'm going to place my mat next to the load line and then you want this right roller on the edge of your cutting mat. So you're going to line the indent up and here's a close-up. with the gray arrow that lines up on the edge of that cutting mat. And I'm just holding my mat up there just to, to show where that arrow is. So no matter what your mat or your material size is, you can hold, your, hold it up there, find the arrow that is the closest to the edge of your material, and that's where you wanna lock your roller in. Okay, so now we've discussed the locations of where it can be locked in. Again, there's only nine locations on the machine that the right roller can be securely locked in place and have successful and not inconsistent feed issues. Like, and as I've said in this, and you're gonna hear it a couple more times, it's not always just one thing. It could be several things in the setup, but you need to start at the beginning so that you can identify what those are. But the right roller being locked in place is one of the bigger ones. So the other thing I want to point out here, I'm going to move this roller back to my 24 inch mark. There are two little white things on the front. These are two in between your rollers and as you can see they freely move. If you look under your roller bar Again, watching your machine is how you learn how it works. And learning how to troubleshoot your machine is going to save you time in the long run. So, these little things are called guides. And all they do, they actually on this machine, they have a very important job. They are on almost all the uh, machines. I'm not sure about the portrait since it's so little in the width. But Cameo models all have them. These guides, if you look under it, are just springs. They don't put force on top of your material, but what they do is they prevent the material from bubbling up in the middle. So if you have your rollers on the very edges with your 24 inch mat or your 24 inch vinyl, as it cuts, that vinyl can kind of move or wave as it's being cut. So these guides serve to hold that material, again, I shouldn't say hold because it doesn't provide force, but the springs just have a little bit of support to keep that material as flat as possible as when, it, when it's cutting. They're not rollers, they're just spring guides that help it as it's cutting. So you want those guides to be spaced evenly apart between your two rollers. The only exception on these guides is if you're doing something like sketching and your pen is fluid and it's wet when you're sketching, you might wanna move those out of the way so that it doesn't roll across the material and make drag marks or lines in your, your ink that's wet. So those are the only two, it's the only time I recommend you moving them out of the way. But that's what they're designed for is to help that material or the cutting mat to lay as flat as possible as it's cutting.